the modern day, any Friday which falls on the 13th of any month is generally considered an unlucky day, and is usually associated with a certain troubled summer camp and an equally troubled undead hockey fan with a thirst for blood. But how did this start? Was it cult classic slasher film Friday the 13th, 1980, that started this association? Though undoubtedly considered a very long time ago by many, the association of doom with Friday the 13th goes back even further than 1980 AD. No one actually knows for sure why or how this phenomenon began, but one plausible theory, and the subject of this video, takes us back to the 12th century AD. The First Crusade had led to the establishment of the Crusader states in the 12th century AD, such as the County of Edessa, the Principality of Antioch, the County of Tripoli, and the Kingdom of Jerusalem, and as a result, the amount of travel between Europe and the Near East increased dramatically. Increased trade, turbulent diplomatic relations, the movement of merchants and goods, and most of all, pilgrimage to the Holy Land caused an unprecedented movement of people across not only borders, but continents. The bulk of this new travel from Europe to the Near East and vice versa was done by pilgrims, off to visit the churches and relics in this newly acquired territory, and as a result, there were now many travelers carrying money and goods which had to sustain them for hundreds or even thousands of miles. And did I mention that were largely unarmed? What was the result? The more enterprising among you may have already done the math in your heads, but for the pure of heart, this led to many roving bands of thieves and bandits who would take advantage of the vulnerable peasants who were often carrying most of their life's work with them to the Holy Land. This problem persisted and was so bad that in 1119, the French knight Hugues de Payens approached King Baldwin II of Jerusalem and proposed creating a monastic order for the protection of these pilgrims. Such a thing had never happened before, and the radical idea of forming a monastic order with the expressed mission of soldiering was indeed something new, and many doubted the viability of such an order. But by 1129, just ten years later, at the Council of Troyes, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, a leading church figure, led a group of leading churchmen to officially approve and endorse the order on behalf of the church. As a result, the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon, commonly referred to as the Kites Templar, or the Templar Kites, became a favorite charity of the wealthy and influential European nobility and their reputation as well-trained and disciplined shock troops became legendary. For about two full centuries, the Templars guarded and maintained the safety and well-being of travelers across the many thousands of miles of roadways located between Europe and the Crusader States and supported the Crusader States in the event of battle or sieges against outside forces. What could go wrong? Over the course of these two centuries, the Templars grew and truly became a force to be reckoned with, not only along the roads and battlefields of the Holy Lands, but across the courtyards of the nobility of Europe, and toes began to be stepped on. As their political power grew they made powerful enemies. Enter King Philip IV of France. Philip sought to reduce the wealth and power of the nobility and clergy within France and he pursued establishing an uncontested monarchy, with himself at the helm of course. This, needless to say, was marked by a rule filled with conflict with his vassals, with the church, and with his neighbors, resulting in wars, civil unrest, and political intrigue. Also, did I mention that King Philip was already deeply in debt to the Templars from his war against England? Shortly thereafter a convenient number of rumors of heresy and corruption within the Knights Templar order started spreading and became popular gossip. They were too powerful, too influential, the Templars had to go. On September 14, 1307, all bailiffs and seneschals in the Kingdom of France were sent secret orders from King Philip IV ordering preparations to be made for the arrest and imprisonment of all members of the Order of Templars. The arrests were to be executed one month later. At dawn on Friday 13 October 1307 King Philip IV ordered hundreds of French Templars to be simultaneously arrested. The arrest warrant started with the words, Duranist par content, nous avons des ennemis de la foi dans le royaume, God is not pleased. We have enemies of the faith in the kingdom. Claims were made that during Templar admission ceremonies, recruits were forced to spit on the cross, and deny Christ, brethren were also accused of worshipping idols, and the order was said to have encouraged homosexual practices. These allegations, were highly politicized without any real evidence, unless you consider the confessions of tortured members convincing. Still, the Templars were charged with numerous other offences such as financial corruption, fraud, and secrecy. With King Philip threatening military action unless the Pope complied with his wishes, Pope Clement finally agreed to disband the order, citing the public scandal that the confessions had generated. At the Council of Vienne in 1312, Pope Clement issued a series of papal bulls, including Vox in Excelso, which officially dissolved the order, and Ad Providum, which turned over most Templar assets to the Hospitallers. 
Thus ended the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon. The order which had faithfully protected the paths and roadways of the Holy Lands for two centuries, extinguished in one night. Friday, 13, October 1307.